Another announcement today, not only do we have the A6700, but we also have a new telephoto lens by Sony, the 70-200 F4 macro lens. This is a G lens, not a G master lens. So technically it's not gonna have the same optics as this 70-200 F2.8 version two. This is a very good performing lens. Check out these sample images. sharp beautiful fall off nice bokeh f4 of course you're not going to get as much depth of field as a 2.8 but when you're shooting wildlife and burning and things like that and you already have so much depth of field from your subject to the background you're not going to really notice much of a difference but this lens also comes in a much smaller package case in point this is the 70 to 200 f 2.8 this is the 70 to 200 f4 macro look at the size difference but internal zoom telescopic zoom when you go to 200 millimeters, they're roughly the same height. This might even be a little bit taller. But if you're gonna be using this on a gimbal, I don't know if you would, but if you are, this is something you have to consider because it's telescopic. You're gonna to have to adjust the weight where this, it's all internal. And the original 70 to 200 F4 was also internal zoom as well. However, there are some benefits to this lens that I wanna talk about. First and foremost, you can now use teleconverters up to two times teleconverters on this, which is gonna give you 400 millimeters at F8 when you're using two times. And that means if you're gonna be shooting in lower light situations, you're gonna to have to crank up that ISO. I had some situations like that testing out this lens at the zoo. And yes, the ISO was creeping up on the A7R5. But if you kind of already know your lighting situations, then I would definitely just say shoot at F4 and then crop in. If you're using, let's say a 60 megapixel camera like the A7R5, then you're gonna be fine to crop in and still maintain some lower ISO performance on that. So, uh, but if you're in brighter situations, definitely go for the teleconverters. No issues at all with that. You have macro capabilities now. It's not a one-to-one -one macro, which is better than anything else on the market currently in the 70 to 200 F4 range. At 70 millimeters, it's 0.26 of a meter. And at 200 millimeters, it's 0.42 of a meter. So that's how close you can get your subjects. I'll show you a sample image right here. I was able to nail the insect. The flower looks beautiful. Absolutely happy with it. And it just gives you more versatility. And if you're gonna use this for video as well, you wanna get some nice B-roll shots, some nice close-up shots, this lens will definitely come in handy. But I do like the weight savings that's here versus the 70 to 200 F2.8. By the way, I absolutely love this lens. It's one of the better performing 70 to 200s on the market currently. This is smaller than the last version, but I will say this is nice to carry in your bag. It's compact, it's lightweight, and I like just how easy it is to take around with me because I was carrying some equipment to the zoo, walking around, putting in some kilometers. This was nice to have on me, but these aren't that heavy. I mean, we're not talking like, oh my God, I gotta have a back brace now. No, it's just comparing the 70 to 200 F2.8 and the F4, the F4 is gonna be a little bit lighter. And also it's gonna be a lot less expensive as well too because F4, F2.8, you're gonna save some uh, costs in that way. In terms of what's on the lens here, obviously you have your autofocus and manual focus switch. You also have your full-time DMF, which means when you're in continuous autofocus, you can you know, go right into manual if you need to, and then it goes right back into that. You have your full to macro in terms of your focal range, and then you have your OSS on and off, and your modes one, two, and three for stabilization. It's a full feature lens, and even though it's a G lens and not a G master lens, I mean, looking at my images at Lightroom, I was, very happy with the performance of it. Now, again, when you're using a teleconverter, you're gonna lose a little bit of sharpness. And so that's something to take note of. I mean, that happens with most teleconverters out there. So keep that in mind. But if you need to get the shot, you need to get the shot. And obviously you can always enhance sharpness and clarity with, you know, a little bit of uh, Lightroom or Photoshop or AI these days. So you're gonna be good to go in that way. And Topaz Denoise or Topaz Sharpening as well. But outside of that though, I like this lens. It's kind of a short video because it performs very well. The optics are great. I've had no issues. Chromatic aberrations well controlled. Fringing is well controlled. Stabilization was decent. I'm happy with it. I really think for the price point, it's a really good lens to carry with you. And I mean, if you have the extra bucks, of course you can go for the 70 to 200 f 2.8, but you're not gonna have macro capability. So is that something that you need? Or can you just say, I can crop in? I don't know. Love to hear from you guys. Anyway, those are my thoughts on it. I think it's a worthy upgrade. And yeah, pick it up if you got the chance and you have the budget. I think you're going to like it. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button as well. And let me know your thoughts on this lens. I will answer those comments and get back to you as soon as I can. With that, guys, thanks for the support. And I will chat to you soon.